Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be creating an 8-ball command for Discord using JavaScript and the Discord.js version 14 library. This command will allow users to ask a question and receive a random response just like a magic 8-ball. Obviously step number one is implementing the 8-ball command. We're going to need to make a new command file that'll sync up with our command handler from past episodes to create a command that accepts a question from a user and responds with a random 8-ball answer. So let's just call this file 8ball.js. Now, I'm going to go over to the ping command and I'm going to use this as a basic template. And I'm also going to make sure to import embed builder. We use an array of possible responses and a random number generator to choose a response from an array. Our array can be stored wherever we want. I'm going to make my note here. I will include this array of possible responses down in the description. It's got 25 possibilities and it should work pretty well for most use cases. You could absolutely make more as you go, but I think 25 is a pretty good starting point for the most part. We'll get it a bit further away so I don't have to look at it constantly. Next, we're gonna have to add a string option. We're gonna set the name of the option to question. We're going to set the description question to ask the eight ball. Minimum length for this is going to be Oh, I don't know, 10? Uh, yeah, 10 seems reasonable. Let's set the max length to 100. Well, do you know what? Let's set it to 250. Because we don't need to respond with the whole question. We're just going to respond with an answer. Actually, do you know what? Let's not even use the embed builder. Let's just respond with plain text. And I suppose we can also add a Boolean option, similar to a string option. And this Boolean option will allow us to decide if it's hidden or not. Even though technically it's called ephemeral, I'm just going to call it hidden because that's easier for most users to understand. We'll display it by default. Anyway, I don't think we're going to have to defer the response from this command because it's not going to take very long for the bot to process the information. The first part is obviously going to be getting the random number. And honestly, we don't even need to do anything with the question input. We can just let it be there. So they feel like they're asking a question, but you can also send it back at them if you'd like and say yes or no with your answer. We might do that actually at the end, but let's start with, ooh, 
Let's see. Since we have a list of 25, well, actually what we can do is let random number equals math.random. And let's see, zero to 25. So zero being index zero, and we're gonna do math dot floor. So this is gonna get the absolute lowest value of this. And let's say 25.9999. And what this is basically going to do is, well actually, no, 24.999 point yeah, that's basically what this is, is if it gets up to 24.999, it's gonna round down to 24. The floor basically just chops off the end. So if it was 0 0.999, it would just be zero. So this gives approximately a fair chance at all the different values. Technically there's a little bit of a offset, but it's not really anything to be concerned about. For error cases and edge cases, there isn't going to be many cases because they're just putting in a question. Uh, we can say that if interaction dot, well, let's get the options then. Const options equals await interaction. And const question equals options dot get string question if it doesn't end in a question mark. If um, question, let's do exclamation point. So it's saying if it doesn't, if it doesn't end with question mark, then return interaction dot reply. And we'll make this ephemeral. Yeah, because why not? That's something you can do. And then we're gonna generate a random number. And then we're going to, you know, let's make an embed. <laughs> I, I can't decide, but let's make an embed. Let's set the title to eight ball. Let's set the author to be interaction. No, we can just set it to user. User dot user name. We can get the user out of here. So this will be whoever sent it. And user dot display avatar URL. And you gotta make sure we put this into Brackets. I believe that's what it's supposed to look like. We'll find out, I guess, soon enough. And we'll set the color to be gold. Why not? All right, so the color is now gold. Dot set description. And we'll set the description to be what the question was, I guess. Question. And we'll add fields. And the one field that we'll have, we'll have a name of response. Uh, 
and a value of whatever the bot decides to respond with. So, um, answers, or sorry, responses, index, random number. That should have the same effect as 24.999, but instead we're gonna get whatever your responses.length is, so that should be more effective. Responses at random number, all right. And now what we can do is interaction dot reply and we'll say ephemeral is based on ephemeral well we'll name it hidden actually keep it consistent And we'll put the embed in there as well. Let's see how this does. I'm sure there's going to be some errors, but we'll see. So far it's worked. <laughs> it is certain. I believe it's called Avatar, actually. All right, and response, I don't, well, do you know what? Let's make it a separate field. Okay, why does it just keep responding with? It is certain. Okay, this isn't working like how I remember from another language that I used to use. Okay, so what we need to do is times and then whatever the maximum value needs to be. So in this case, it's responses dot length minus zero point zero zero one. So that should do it. If we put it in brackets. And then we say math dot floor. That should do it. Highly doubt it. Outlook good. Concrete or concentrate and ask again. My sources say no. Definitely not. Cannot predict now. Okay. So it's working. It's just the random function is not what I'm used to. Other than that, no errors. I'm amazed that I didn't get a single error through that process, other than, you know, obviously the one.
And of course we could add more customization options later, but those aren't necessary yet. Same as with the poll command. We'll work on a database soon and you'll be able to change some new stuff. Uh, change some things. <clears throat> and that's it. By following these steps, you should now have a fully functional 8-ball command for your Discord server. This is just one example of what you can do with Discord.js and JavaScript. So feel free to experiment and customize the code to fit your needs. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave any suggestions you may have for future videos in the comment section below. Bye for now. Website with code for all the videos is now in the description. So it's great. You can go on there. You can look at the code snippets slash video section. And what that has is it has old videos and it has code snippets underneath. So it helps you compare your code. It doesn't have the code word for word as you go further into the series, but it definitely does have a good starting point and you can compare the core concepts to make sure you have exactly the right wording as sometimes case sensitive stuff is a real pig big pain in the butt for starting out. I have this as an option. So make sure to check that out, like, and subscribe for more and see you on the next episode. Bye for now.